Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, May 12, 2022. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. This is episode 537 and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, you can turn on subtitles. I create them myself. In today's episode, Li Feng's Daybreakers releases a new batch of posters. Sean Doe catches flack from netizens for, of all things, wishing his girlfriend happy birthday. Xiao Chan updates his Weibo and wins a court case. And Eddie Peng also wins a court case, he is awarded over 300,000 RMB. But first, here's what's recently premiered, just the one drama for today and yesterday. Luoyang Sichenjing, also known as The Four Daughters of Luoyang, is a costume drama starring Lai Yumeng and Yu Yijie, and it premiered yesterday, May 11th. According to Baidu, the titular Four Daughters of Luoyang are launched into a family crisis when their parents suddenly disappear. Lai Yumeng plays one of the sisters, and Yu Yijie a young general. The drama is slated for 40 episodes, apparently they're only 8 minutes long each, and it's available on Tencent, no English subs at the moment. And that's it for recently premiered dramas. Moving on, here are some dramas that recently announced their premiere dates. Destined to Meet You is a modern drama starring Yang Tzu and Lu Yanqi, and they've announced a May 13th premiere. Douban explains the plot as a romance which develops when the female GM of a conglomerate meets a male college student who sings at a bar at night. There's also Unmarried Hot Mom, a modern drama starring Liu Riqiao and Wang Yijun. They've announced a May 14th premiere. As the title implies, it follows an unmarried hot mom as she tries to balance motherhood with her employment in a modern-day workplace. Then there's Love You Day and Month, a modern drama starring Li Le and Feng Yiyi. They've announced a May 18th premiere. An accidental kiss between a domineering CEO and a cleaning girl leads to a blossoming romance. And lastly, there's Defying the Storm, a Republican era drama starring Hu Yitian and Zhang Ronan. According to Wiki, it follows Hu Yitian's character, a student at the Southwestern Associated University and Zhang Ronan's character, a fellow student. The two fall in love as they work together to develop the medical school at Peking University. So there it is, a Republican era and three modern dramas. Not sure if any of them jump out at me, but I'll still update on where to watch with English subs, if available, after they premiere. And that's it for premiere date announcements. Moving on, one of Li Yifeng's upcoming dramas recently released some stills. It's called Daybreaker, and it's a modern suspense drama. On May 8th, they released a new batch of character posters. As Stopan explains it, Li Feng plays an anti-narcotics officer who fakes his own death, assumes a new identity, and goes undercover as he infiltrates a drug cartel. Here's female lead Song Yi listening on intently. And Hong Kong actor Stephen Fung puts in a special appearance. It's been several years since he last acted in a drama or movie. Daybreaker is part of Aichi's Light On series, which includes The Bad Kids and Who Is The Murderer, so we can expect thrills and spills. Maybe. More updates on Daybreaker as they provide them. Moving on, a rap update. On May 8th, Heroes starring Qing Junjie and Liu Yuning officially announced themselves. They followed that up yesterday with an announcement that they have wrapped after 130 days of filming. Looks like there was some cake involved. There's also more info on the story now. According to Douban, the two main characters are an imperial guard who was imprisoned for his participation in the 100 days reform, and a poor but skillful fighter. My guess is Qin Junjie plays the guard, and Liu Yining plays the fighter. And that's it for drama updates, moving on celebrity updates, and we begin with Sean Doe, who caught flack from netizens for, of all things, wishing his girlfriend a happy birthday. Sean stars in the recently aired Republican era drama Love in Flames of War, which is doing quite well on viewing and popularity charts. 
He and billionaire heiress Lorinda Ho confirmed their relationship in 2019 and have been together since. On May 9th, Sean wished Lorinda a happy 31st birthday. He wrote on Weibo, May you have today, every year. Such an annoying little goblin tossing me around. Daughter-in-law found it herself, squatting like a toad and facing the spring breeze. No more nonsense, 3, 2, 1, smile. It sounds like there's context to that message that only the two of them understand, but that squatting like a toad bit might have something to do with this photo that he shared. Anyway, Lorinda reshared Sean's message and said, It's that time of the year when you post ugly photos of me again. You'll be fine if you post them while hiding. So just a bit of friendly banter between the celebrity couple, but apparently some netizens were not happy about it, particularly some viewers of the drama Love and Flames of War. These viewers accused Sean of being inconsiderate of the drama's fans who are now disengaged from the drama. This particular comment told him to, quote, Consider us drama fans and our drama experience. We thank you on behalf of your character, close quote. This one says, quote, I'm heartbroken for the female lead. I just finished today's episode, and after reading Sean's Weibo message, I am broken. We all know he has a girlfriend, but did he have to do that? If you, Sean, don't want to film romance dramas, then don't do it, but don't drag others down with you, close quote. And if you thought that one was aggressive, this one says, quote, I was so hooked on the drama, now I'm just disinterested. Sean Doe, if you want to marry into the whole family, that's your business. You can disregard your career and the entire drama crew's effort, but please, don't affect the tens of thousands of drama fans' mood. Please, netizens, tell us what you really think. Anyway, not all comments slayed at Sean like that. In fact, many of them called him a good boyfriend and urged him to pay no attention to those naysayers. Next up, a couple of updates on Xiao Chan, beginning with the changes he made to his Weibo profile. It used to say, member of X9 boy group, actor, representative works include The Untamed, Joy of Life, and The Wolf. Now it says, member of X9 boy group, actor, singer, representative works include The Oath of Love, Ace Troops, The Untamed, etc. Many of his fans expressed delight with this update and also expressed excitement for two of his upcoming dramas, The Longest Promise and Where Dreams Begin. The other Xiao Chan update has to do with legal matters. According to this recent Sena Entertainment article, Xiao Chan won a reputation rights case and the defendant published a handwritten letter of apology. Another day, another celebrity netizen duel that's gone the celebrity's way. In this case, the netizen posted and reshared several negative remarks about Xiao Chan on social media, remarks that amounted to excessive personal attacks. The court determined that the behavior constituted a violation of Xiao Chan's reputation rights. The netizen said that they deeply realized the mistake of their behavior and have deleted all Weibo accounts involved in the case. They promised not to make similar remarks in the future and deeply apologized to Xiao Chan. And staying on the topic of celebrity legal matters, Eddie Peng just won a court judgment to the tune of 300,000 RMB. That's according to this Sena Entertainment article published yesterday. Eddie Peng is the 40-year-old Taiwanese star of movies like 2021's Are You Lonesome Tonight and 2020's The Rescue. Here's a casual picture of Eddie, and don't let the fish hat fool you into thinking he's a pushover. He recently kicked a few companies' asses in a rights infringement case. According to these public announcements, in 2021, two companies, Yijian Tech and Letu, use Eddie's image on their products' packaging and posters without his consent. Another company, Qingdao Zero Distance, used Eddie's image to promote their line of fitness sports watches, also without his consent. Ultimately, the court ruled in Eddie's favor. The three companies issued letters of apology and compensated a total of around 313,000 RMB, approximately 47,000 USD. Next up, Ohau responds when he's asked about him hugging a woman, says it was just a crew wrap dinner. 
Oh Hao is the 29-year-old star of the recently premiered crime drama The Fight. He also recently wrapped filming his latest drama The Eve. According to Senna, paparazzi photographers snapped pictures of Oh Hao chatting with a woman, giving her a hug, giving her his hat, and entering a car together. Netizens started to link the two together, and reporters asked his reps for a comment. They responded, it's fictitious, that was just a wrap dinner and she was part of the crew. And lastly, for the celebrity segment, we'll just end with this picture of Yang Yang, Wang Churan, and like 10 piglets. According to Sena Entertainment, Yang Yang and Wang Churan were in a pet store while filming for their latest drama, My Fireworks on Earth. In it, Yang Yang plays a firefighter. On that note, it's Thursday today, so time for another segment of my predictions for this Sunday's Top 10 Champions. As you guys know, every Sunday we do the Top 10 Chinese Web and TV Dramas of the Week. In this segment, I give some of my thoughts and predictions as to who the champions will be. To recap, last week's Top Web Drama was Who Rules the World with Yang Yang and Zhao Lusi. And the Top TV Drama was Master of My Own with Kenny Lin and 710. Be Reborn with Zhang Yi and Kerry Wang might knock on the door for top web drama, I've heard lots of good stuff about it. Love and Flames of War might give Master of My Own a good run for its money to be the top TV drama. But ultimately, I think the champions will stay the same. Who Rules the World and Master of My Own to top the charts again this week. What do you guys think? And that's been another segment of my predictions for this Sunday's Top 10 Champions. Before I let you guys go, I want to give a big virtual hug to Lake Amanda Lady, who recently became a patron on my Patreon. Thank you for your generous support. And that brings us to the end of this episode. If you want to check out the Untamed t-shirt or other Chinese drama merchandise, there's a link to it in the description below. And this show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, you'll have access to perks like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers!